Last year we went into kind of more of the technical details of e-bikes. Uh, this year we're going to um, just talk about the evolution of e-bikes. Um, where did it start and uh, where are we today? The first event I'm going to talk about is 1999. Actually the first electric bike was built back in the late 1800s. I don't have a picture on it, I wish I did, but uh, there wasn't much done with electric bikes over the next hundred years until 1999. Does anybody here in this audience know what 1999 represents for e-bikes? Well, I'm going to try to give you a clue. Let's see if I can see if I can play this um, video. Is the sound hooked up from this? No, the sound's not on. That's a shame. Anyway, Lee Iacocca back in 1999 um, introduced the first e-bike. He's the one who actually named the bike. That's him there in that uh, EV Motors bicycle, his e-bike. Anyway, um, he had very high expectations and all of his investors obviously knew that he had quite a track re record behind him for success. Uh, I think he's credited with uh, the Ford Mustang and um, later on he's the one who turned Chrysler around, got them out of debt uh, after the government bailed them out and um, he was kind of riding high but uh, for many years apparently Lee Iacocca thought that uh, the e-bike is something that would happen. He basically always put his money on the, uh, the baby boomer generation and he thought 1999 was the right year for the baby boomers. It was a little bit early. Uh, we're thinking right now that this is approaching the time it's right for e-bikes. Actually e-bike sales in this country doubled in one year so uh, we hope again it'll double next year. But anyway, Lee I. Cook was the one who kind of got things rolling and uh, he was hoping to sell a million bikes a year but um, I think the first year they only sold 12,000 bikes. That was a big loss for the investors, including Lee Iacocca. He had quite a bit of his own money invested. But I'll tell you just a tiny bit about the technology that he came forth with. This particular bike, you'll still see these occasionally. These are literally collector's items nowadays. People who own them love them. They want to keep them. There's virtually nothing on that bike that you can buy replacement parts for nowadays. Uh, there is a company in New York that will attempt to give you a battery that uh, if, if your battery goes bad, it's a lead acid battery is what he had in there. Uh, it had a hub motor on the rear that was, the original ones were uh, brush type motors, which if anybody knows what brush type motors are, it's just a high maintenance type motor. It doesn't last that long before it either needs maintenance or needs to be replaced. Um, so we've gone through a number of changes since then. But anyway, just for kind of entertainment purposes, I wanted to show you all the car companies understand that there is a trend towards people by riding bicycles much, much more. The e-bike is very popular. Um, I will give you just some statistics. In this country, there were 150,000 e-bikes sold last year in the, US, in the United States. In Europe, there were 1.2 million that were sold. In China, they sold 30 million to the Chinese. So if you want to know where the e-bike market is, China is where the e-bike market is. That's where almost everything is made when it comes to e-bikes. But anyway, the, the car companies are very cognizant of the fact that these will be something that they will eventually be selling because they are very, very efficient. Rather than spending $75 to fill a gas tank, you plug it into your wall outlet and you spend, uh, you spend five cents and you're, you're recharged and you're good for another 20 miles. Anyway, there's Ford's, Ford's uh, well, this, probably, this is probably the Lincoln model. There's the, uh, I, 
I think this one was designed by the truck division. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit, uh, probably is very heavy duty. Uh, Porsche, that's theirs. BMW's got a nice little foldable bike, kind of a cute one. By the way, um, it's not this one, but BMW literally is selling an e-bike. I have no idea why they would go into this market, but they have one for $85,000. Now, why you would want to spend $85,000 for an e-bike, there are some people, I guess, that will. Uh, Audi, that's their bike. That's a nice, uh, nice design, nice heavy duty. They got the weight of the system right down low in the middle of the bike, which is where it should be. If you'll notice, that has what we call a mid-drive system on it. I'll see if I can point it out to you. My pointer on, yeah. Excuse me, the mid-drive the mid is right in there. That's where the motor is. Uh, some bikes have um, hub motors. The most efficient is the, is the mid-drive system. Uh, Lexus, as, as a Lexus name would represent, you're getting an elegant bike out of them. Honda has a nice folding bike, and here again, that's a mid-drive system. That would be a fun bike to, uh, to ride. Toyota and Yamaha teamed up to come up with this model, kind of futuristic. Volkswagen has a very nice looking model. Mercedes, I don't know. Engineering wise, I'm sure this is what the, the only thing that drives Mercedes is engineering. Aesthetics are not one of their uh, avenues. Anyway, the, the smart car, they came up with this uh, particular uh, model here. Anyway, let's move on. Um, last year, I was the only e-bike distributor that was represented, and I had no idea that there would be any interest in e-bikes. And we put a bicycle out at the last minute for people to, to take a test ride on, and we literally had people lined up for two days taking test rides, and I never really got time for lunch. So we invited other e-bike dealers to come in this year. We are, we're competitive, but we're friendly. Uh, most of us, uh, quite frankly, will never get rich in this business, but uh, we do believe in e-bikes, and we all want to get the word out, if you will, to everybody to at least try one, see what they're like, because it can be a life-changing experience. And quite literally, rather than being a toy or something that um, you play with, it's practical transportation and it's also practical exercise. Uh, in Benicia, if anybody's ever tried to ride bicycles here without any power on, you know, our, our hills here are formidable just like they are in San Francisco. Uh, with an e-bike, you can get up and down the hills. Uh, and that's what got me into it. I wanted to be able to leave home, ride my bike, and then ride back up those hills, put it back in the garage, and be done with it. That's, that's what an e-bike will do for you. But anyway, we have some good uh, dealers here. Of course, California e-bike, e-bike solutions. Um, Doug Dot standing right there. Yeah, he's here to heckle. He's up near Fairfield, and he's been in the business for about four years. Uh, very knowledgeable. He's got some very good product, and uh, here again, he is anxious to uh, help you out if you want some assistance with an e-bike. We also have here um, Mission Motorcycles. Uh, I don't know if anybody has seen those, if you have any interest in them. Uh, they're not like the, the electric motorcycles of a few years ago. These will go zero to 60 miles an hour in three seconds. And uh, they'll go over 100 miles an hour, so they're, they're a motorcycle. Uh, they have one up here and they have one down below, but they, they're not giving demo rides, uh, which I can understand why. We were supposed to have Yuba bikes here. Uh, what happened to them, I don't know, but Yuba bikes are cargo type bikes. You'll see some coming up, um, but it's a very utilitarian bike. There's two companies I know of that make them here locally, one in Petaluma, which is Yuba, and then Extra Cycle is out of uh, Oakland, Berkeley area. Uh, they're both successful with what they do. You'll see, if you travel much of Marin County in San Rafael, you'll see a lot of the uh, cargo bikes there because a lot of people, they transport the children on the back, they'll, they'll haul goods, whatever. So they're here, please visit their booths. You, I thought I had the booth numbers on there, I guess I don't, but here, the, you'll get the booth numbers here. There's Mission Motorcycles, that's one of their, uh, one of their vehicles, one of their rockets. This is Yuba Bicycle, there's what a uh, cargo bike looks like and that's 
I, I took this particular picture because that's what they're used for is to haul cargo and uh, they make them in a tandem as well. A lot of people use them as you see there with that woman transporting her two children. That's very typical of, of the usage of these bikes. And they use the uh, Bionic system, which you can see down at the bottom. Bionics is, a, is an expensive uh, conversion system, but it makes an e-bike, uh, makes a very good e-bike, and uh, they have a very good reputation. Uh, wheels in Motion, I, if you're from Benicia, you know Wheels in Motion. Uh, everybody knows Greg. Greg's a very friendly guy in Joy. Uh, has a bike shop downtown. He's got a booth down at the other end here. And he was supposed to have, I, I have to heckle him because he was supposed to have an electric tricycle here. But I think he waited a little too long to get it put together. Um, but he will have an electric tricycle uh, available to probably to take rides on and to sell. So uh, give him some support. I, I took this one. This is literally from uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, they're, they're very much into bikes up there, but some of the delivery services up there use e-bikes, like as you see here, to transport cargo around town in. It's a, it's a very fun and efficient, clean way to deliver goods, deliver pizzas, whatever. So that's what I'm hoping he'll build is something like that. And then we have New Wheel. They're down here. Uh, New Wheel, quite frankly, has the high-end bikes, the very, uh, very well-engineered bikes. Uh, that's what Constance uh, uses is the, is the Kolkoff, you see down here. Uh, she bought her bike from them, and uh, it's a very good bike. All the bikes that they have are very good. They also will have demo rides outside on two of their bicycles. But that's Karen and Brett you see in the picture there. They have a very, very neat shop. Uh, I don't know. My English language is not good enough to describe, but it's it's... It's eclectic, I guess. Yeah, haute decor. <laughs> yeah, very nice place. And they're very friendly people. They're, they're wanting to help you out in whatever way. Um, I think there's, this is a Kolkoff bike. This is like the one Constance rides on the bottom. And then they have a smaller uh, fold-up frame pictured at the top. And then Doug Dot, which you see over here, uh, he's got this particular bike, at least one like it over here at the uh, trike recumbent from Laid Back Cycles. Um, he does a good marketing job on these. I would love to have one of these myself, to tell you the truth, but they're very stable and um, they, they make hill climbing a lot more simple than, the, than just a straight bike. Anyway, Doug is a very, very helpful competitor. California e-bikes, that's who I represent. Uh, this is a new line of bikes. This is a mid-drive, what they call a purpose-built bike. And also the one up there with the pedals on it. I do conversions now with a, a mid-drive system. That's uh, my Bafang called, uh, uh, called 8Fun. Anyway, that's a very efficient system. If you want to test right on, the, one of the bikes outside has that on it. And uh, I do have one of these uh, epic bikes out there as well. It's a, a 700C series, it's a road bike. Um, last year, uh, the fellow in the middle, he's the one who won the uh, the e-bike last year. He really wanted to be here. He's such a nice guy and uh, he's come back many times. He said to tell everybody he's having so much fun with his, his e-bike. He actually commutes into Oakland from Morinda, so he rides the bike to BART, puts it in a little container, locks it up while he takes off on BART and goes in town. He does this every day, uh, all, all through the year, so he's, uh, he's a, good, a good man to uh, get a recommendation from. Anyway, I'll talk a little bit about the evolution of the technology of the e-bikes. Um, the one at the top, that's what we call a brush type motor. That's looking at the insides of it. The brushes literally send the electricity uh, onto that copper armature and that's how you commutate the motor. That's a very high maintenance motor. The lead acid battery, which most people here know what a lead acid battery is. That's what used to be in the bikes. Um, and let me, let me dispel a myth. You can buy lead acid batteries very cheap, but the cheapness, if you look behind the scenes, they're not, they're not cheap anymore. 
for this reason. You can get about 250 recharges out of a lead acid battery. You might buy it for $100 or $200, but uh, the lithium ion batteries, you'll spend five to $700 for a good lithium ion battery. Uh, but they will last at least a thousand charges. Some are saying two thousand charges. So if you look at it from that standpoint, lithium-ion batteries are the—that's the cheap way to go. Uh, and it's—they're one fourth the the weight also of lead acid. Uh, they pack four times the density of energy. So that's why we use uh, lithium batteries with the e-bikes. Uh, next thing to happen on the uh, on the e-bikes as far as uh, technology advancing. The one on the top is what we call a direct drive brushless DC uh, hub motor. This does not use any brushes at all, so there's not really any wear items on there. There's three Hall effect sensors. I won't try to go into the technology on them, but basically you have a line of permanent magnets. These are rare earth magnets around the outside of that motor. And as the wheel turns, those Hall effect sensors sense the motion of the motor and they, that then feeds back to the controller to make the motor spin to whatever speed you want it to or how, however much torque you want to give it. Uh, down at the bottom, the one thing about the direct drive motors is since they are just plain direct drive in the wheel, they use nothing but brute force to, to make that wheel go around. Uh, a motor likes to have some RPM to have some efficiency to it, so to kind of get a little bit of efficiency, uh, the one down at the bottom is, um, it has a uh, planetary gear system inside it. So you take the same wattage motor, put a five to one gear ratio in there, you allow your motor to spin at a higher RPM, you get more torque. So that was the next evolution. Um, there's a lithium ion battery. This was one of the first with the blue one at the top. Uh, the lithium battery comes with an electronic circuit on it. So when you're charging it, it balances all the cells. It makes them all charge alike. And then when you are discharging it to drive your motors, it protects not only the battery, but the motor from a, a runaway current. So it's a... Um, Depending on what size motor you have selected, you need to select the right size battery so that you can get just the right amount of amperage. Most, most hub motors, for instance, will run anywhere from, uh, I think, 14 amps up to about 40 amps. Uh, 40 amps is a heck of a lot of power, and uh, you have to monitor it with a system like this. Uh, one of the latest is the lithium imide battery. This is a battery that was developed by uh, Leiden Technologies in Fremont. Um, they're one of the highest rated companies for batteries in the, I think in the world really. But uh, that particular one on the bottom is a battery that was developed specifically for, for e-bikes. Uh, that's an 8.8 .8 amp hour battery, 36 volt. It'll take you down the road 20, about 20 miles before it runs out of power. This is the mid-drive system I was talking about. This is something that has just been released within the last few months. Uh, I saw these at the show down in Las Vegas. They have Interbike down there. And I'm very, very impressed with the results of this. You can take a 500-watt mid-drive motor and do as much as you can with a 1,000-watt hub motor. It's just that efficient. And, and it gets this efficiency by uh, running the torque the, the, through the drivetrain of the, of the bicycle. You're, you're utilizing all the different speed ranges of your bike. Like if you have an eight speed, then you get to utilize that and that's where you pick up your efficiency. Um, I put this bike on because, I'll tell you just a very quick story on how we're doing on time. I was down at the ferry building just a few months ago and a guy rode in about my, about my age and about my weight riding one of these. And um, it's, it's a fairly small, I think they use a 20, I believe those are 20 inch wheels, they may be 24s. But anyway, he pulled up behind the ferry building, he chained it up to the, uh, the, to the fence there next to the water. And he goes in and gets an ice cream cone, comes back out. And I said, geez, how do you like your e-bike? He, he, he wasn't much for talk, but he looked at me and he said, you know, he said, I've had this bike for four years. And he says, in four years, I haven't, I haven't spent one penny on gasoline. I haven't spent one penny on insurance. I can park this thing anywhere I want to. 
And I said, yeah, but how about climbing the hills? And he told me, I can't think of the name of the street now, but it's one of those streets that goes vertical. He says, I go up that every day with this bike. So he said, what's your next question? <laughs> Anyway, he was a good testman. I wish I'd have got a picture of him because he was, he was quite a character, but that little bike did a job for him. I'm going to move on and show you some other bikes. Uh, there's an all-terrain vehicle that you can buy for $9,000. Believe me, that'll get you, uh, that'll get you over a lot of, lot of things. Uh, if you want a truck, there's a $10,000 e-bike truck. I imagine that was pretty powerful. Um, this one, I believe, I can't read the name of it here, but um, yeah, this is the Outrider 422 Alpha. I believe this one won the Pikes Peak race. They, uh, I think they do this every year, but they, they race up Pikes Peak on e-bikes, and whoever wins obviously uh, gets a lot of applause and so forth. This bike won that race. It's very, uh, very high powered, very efficient. I've seen the video, and you can see it on, on YouTube. Uh, Stealth Bomber is another bike that is getting a lot of publicity. Um, uh, a lot of these are sold in, over in England for some reason, but anyway, a very powerful bike. I think this one will, will cruise along at 45, 50 miles an hour, and I think it has a 50 mile range, which is, is uh, quite phenomenal. They must have a lot of battery capacity in that bike, but it's, uh, it's got shocks front and back on it, so it's, I'm sure it's easy to ride. Uh, OptiBike, which is, uh, these were all at the, sh uh, the show, by the way, in Las Vegas. This is one of the top end bikes here. Uh, they've got ones a little bit less money than this one is, but this is the creme de la creme of e-bikes, if you will. Here again, they use a mid-drive motor system on it. It's a very powerful system. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think, they may use the Bosch system. Anyway, that looks like a motorcycle that literally has pedals on it. The pedals are behind the shrouds. This bike, again, will go very fast. I think this one will, you can get it up to uh, 65 miles an hour. Uh, and you can still be pedaling, but it's going to be mostly electric power. Um, this is another bike. This is a, a, for some reason, extremely expensive bike. They make bikes that are more expensive than this. This is handmade in uh, Budapest, Hungary. A lot of uh, CNC machine parts on this bike, a lot of titanium, uh, and it may have some carbon fiber on it, I'm not real sure, but it's uh, quite a bike. Anyway, here's a bike that you'll get a kick out of. This is made over in Moran County, I believe. Uh, they make two different styles. This is the, the uh, Kenny Roberts Pie Cycle. They make uh, the standard Pi cycle, which I think is 6,900. This one's 8,900. So uh, I guess it rides very nice. It's very smooth. So I need to wrap up. Okay. Anyway, if you're interested in an e-bike, everybody here I'm sure has specials on today. Check them out. And uh, like the little shopping cart says, take one home with you. We'd love that. And there's the booth numbers for all the riders. Do I have one time? Do I have time for just one 30-second commercial? All right, I showed this last year. Yes, I just love it, so we'll show it again. You've been meaning to get out on your bike more. Now it's working. You know, get out there, get healthy. But you're not in good enough shape to tackle these pesky obstacles. With California e bike and electric motor assist, you become a human hybrid. And you'll be able to level the playing field. You'll enjoy getting out there. So we'll do it with you. California e-bike helps you feel healthier and is good for our planet. E-bike makes life easier. See more at california-ebike.com. <laughs> Thank you for your patience.